Welcome everyone. Craig from Arms and Armor here today. We're going to talk a little bit about a sword I've, we've made to go out to the Ren Fair as a piece to sell. But it's a style that we've done a few of them in the past and I, we particularly like them. Um, it is a small wide bladed double edged sword that has a bit of a knuckle bow, uh, oftentimes a forward guard on it. And these particular swords are seen quite a bit in kind of Italian context, uh, Mediterranean. They are pieces that have quite a uh, utility to them. They're easy to carry in a crowded street because they're only, you know, 20, this one's 29 and three quarters inches, I think, overall. Uh, the blade is wide, so it's got some heft to it. This is just a hair over two pounds. Uh, it's got an acute point, excellent for thrusting. Um, but this type of sword really uh, suits for a close combat situation where individuals will be fighting in close quarters. Um, you may not have the length you would need for a rapier to maneuver and have the footwork abilities that you would need in a tight space. Uh, this is the kind of sword that I always envision like the serving men in Romeo and Juliet carrying uh, oftentimes dressed right on their hip, possibly across their back even. Uh, it's probably very similar in time period to Cinque Days or just before. Um, we've done some of these before, like the Sword of St. Martin, which is from a Book of Hours and is 1440. So this would probably favor a little later with this style. Uh, we've got a slightly S-shaped guard here that comes up with a very nicely shaped knuckle bow on there. This one has a hexagonal pommel, much like the, uh, or actually this is octagonal pommel, uh, much like the uh, St. Martin one I did. Um, you can see it's got some risers mid grip here that gives a good purchase, gives you a good feel on the sword. You can feel the activity of the blade in action against other blades. And then a slight turn forward on the top. The blade is, as I said, wide, double-edged, fairly acutely pointed, uh, cuts very, very well, and would be something very serious in a street fight in Italy in 1490 or 1560. You know, you see these uh, depicted in art quite often for people of probably mid-class and lower, um, and the amount of effort to go in to make a sword like this well, considerable, maybe not quite as expensive as a rapier would be, probably not as fashionable, but it would have been for the people that were maybe not as concerned about that as uh, individuals who were spending a lot more on particular pieces like a rapier. Um, I really like these swords a lot. That's probably why I make them when I'm doing these kind of things. We're considering maybe making this one into something like a regular piece, maybe go with a slightly different pommel there's some examples that have kind of a nice shell-shaped pommel. Um, some of them will have a cutout for the fingers even, so the grip could be a bit shorter even than on this sword. But this is a very uh, elegant little sword that works quite well. Blade's only 23 and a half inches long or so. So it's a um, excellent sword for basically being out at a rent fair where you got crowds around you. You wouldn't be banging into people with something like this. But you would also have a lot of opportunity to cut with something like this, use it in uh, all sorts of uh, forms of combat. It would be excellent for using in a fight, but uh, most of us don't fight with sharps. So, uh, you know, it is a, a sword that is really designed to be a lethal little weapon in the hands of somebody who may be dealing with problems around them in the street. Uh, this type of piece is something we, um, have made, as I said, uh, several times before, but it is not oftentimes kind of included in the panoply of swords. When you're talking about styles and types, oftentimes it kind of gets regulated. Uh, some people say, well, it's not even a real sword, it's a dagger or something like that. These are swords, uh, just like the larger Cinquedes are swords, or the larger Katzbulgers are swords, and they're probably from about those same time periods, it's just a different, idea of what that sword could and would be um, in the context of those things. 
Uh, something like this very much could have been seen all over Italy, the Balkans, um, throughout the Mediterranean area, probably even in England and uh, some of the low countries would have been a uh, style, uh, possibly Iberian Peninsula. It would have been something that would have been recognizable in that time period. Uh, but today, they, it kind of falls by the wayside. We don't get a lot of uh, people looking at it and saying, oh, that's the kind of sword I want. Um, it's not particularly big. It's just elegant, nice in the hand, uh, probably a little less expensive than your average sword, and a very good compromise for somebody who maybe doesn't have the great amounts of wealth that a duke or a prince would have, uh, or even a noble. Uh, so this kind of sword would have been that kind of person's piece to carry in the street. Hope you like it and watch our site. We may have something like this similar in the near future. And we hope you have a great day.